back to my channel. My name is Hope and I am a photographer serving both Charleston and Savannah. And this YouTube channel is where I share education for photographers as well as a little bit of a peek into my life living in the low country. And if you've been following me for any amount of time on YouTube or Instagram or anywhere, then you know that senior portraits are my first love. They are kind of what I'm known for in the education industry. They are what I teach about constantly. And they are also what built my entire business. I started my business almost 10 years ago when I was a senior in high school myself. So naturally I was photographing my peers and the first three years of my business were built on photographing nothing but high school senior clients. So I just love them. I love talking about them. I love teaching about them. I love the strategy that goes into building a senior portrait business and the images that I create as a result. So today I want to talk about building a senior photography business in 2022. I'm going to talk through the five things that I feel like are most important in a successful senior photography business and how I would do them if I was doing it right now in 2022. So very excited about this video. And if you want to, I have a free gift for you down in the description below. If you are looking to level up your senior images, I think posing is one of the best places to start to really see a huge increase in the way that you love your images. So in the description, I have a free gift for you. It is my senior boy posing guide, and it is my 10 favorite go-to poses for senior guys, as well as a two page description of why posing is so important, how I think about posing in my business, and some tips and tricks for you to try at your next senior session. So grab a copy of that below, 100% free, no catch. It's just my free gift to you to say thank you so much for tuning in. So let's dive right in. And we're gonna talk about five things, like I mentioned, the five things that I think are most important in building a senior photography business in 2022. So first up, number one is going to sound like common sense, um, but you need to master your craft as a photographer. And the reason that I'm starting with this is not to just be redundant and like say something to say something. Um, I'm saying it because I think there are a lot of educators in the photography space right now that teach you about marketing and they teach you about business and they teach you about all of these amazing topics to grow your business, but none of them really mention the fact that in order for those things to work from a marketing and a business perspective, you have to have stellar images that people want, right? And so your number one priority when growing a senior photography business should be to master your craft. And this is the one I'm going to talk the least about only because I have a ton of videos on my channel that break down the gear that I have in my bag, tips for shooting, for posing, for lighting, for editing. You can find all of those things on my channel because I teach about senior portraits literally every single week. But that needs to be your number one priority. You need to be getting out there, practicing with your camera, mastering using manual, figuring out which lenses you like best, and just really getting comfortable behind the camera with consistent editing and being able to consistently produce images that look the same and that you are proud of, right? And in that sense, practice makes perfect. There's really nothing that I can tell you that's a shortcut, easy way around that. I would take my camera out and photograph anything and everything I could. If it was raining, I was taking close up pictures of the raindrops on the flower petals. If I had a new dog in my family, I was like putting him in a flower pot and taking pictures of him on my parents' patio. I was just teaching myself how to get comfortable with shooting, with setting my settings, with focus, with all of those things. So your number one priority should be mastering your craft and you should never overlook that for the sake of buzzworthy marketing trends because if your images aren't stellar and you aren't confident behind the camera to create consistent gallery, then nothing else matters. So start there, start mastering your craft. And if that's where you are right now in your photography journey, pause this video and go search my channel for other videos about things like gear and lighting and shooting so that you can start in the right spot. Number two, so first thing, master your craft. Number two, in the process of mastering your craft and going out and using your camera and photographing as often as you can, I want to encourage you to share all of that work and make yourself appear to be in demand, even if you aren't. And what I mean by that is when I was in those early seasons of my business as a high school student, I was going out and shooting all the time. Like I just said, I was going out and photographing my dog and my peers and my friends and my family. I was using my camera all the time. 
And while that's really important to master your craft, like I just mentioned, if you use those images and that content strategically and share that on social media to show every single day that you are creating new images, that sends the message to other people that you are one, in demand, so they better book you quickly or else they're not gonna get the chance. It shows them two, that you are working to build your business and better your work and that you're a hard worker. And number three, it shows the improvement of your work over time, right? Like you could post a picture today and then post a picture three weeks from now and people will see that progression and that progress. But if you're not sharing those images at all, you aren't bringing those followers or those communities along with you to be a part of that process and you're doing yourself a disservice. So if you're taking the time to go out and master your craft and use your camera, make sure you're sharing those images. Make yourself appear to be in demand and strategically share that content across your platforms so people know that you're working hard and that you're growing your business and improving your work. Number three is to share behind the scenes of your business and show what makes you different by marketing personally. And I've also talked a lot about this on my channel, but there are some ways that I would do it differently in 2022, just because of the ways that social media has changed and then platforms that I use have changed. So I wanna make sure that I'm going out of my way to create behind the scenes content anytime I'm shooting or working on my business. And what I mean by that is one of the reasons that my business grew quickly is because I wasn't just showing the final product of the beautiful professional images that I was taking, but I was taking my followers along on that journey with me. I was taking behind the scenes Instagram stories at every shoot that I was doing. I was taking pictures of me and my senior clients grabbing Slurpees and like the drive through in between locations at their shoots. I was showing how much fun we had behind the scenes and how like a random patch of grass in a gas station parking lot with the right lighting can create the beautiful final product that you see on my Instagram feed after the shoot. I wanted to make my followers feel like they were a part of the creation process. And I have actually found that when I take the time to share the behind the scenes and the creation process of my images, people engage more with those posts. Like if I take the time to post behind the scenes of a shoot, the sneak peek that I post from that shoot, the final image that I share, will get double the engagement, double the likes, double the comments, because people saw the process of how I got there and it built anticipation for them to be excited to see that final photo. And in addition to bringing them along for the creation process, I'm showing peaks into my day-to-day -day life. I am making my personality a part of my brand so people feel like they know me before they ever even work with me in person. One of the biggest compliments that I get is when somebody has followed me online for a long time and then they meet me in person and they're like, oh my gosh, you are just like you are online because I want my personality to be a part of what appeals to my potential clients. And if I'm sharing sharing who I am and integrating that into the way that I market my business, by default, nobody can duplicate that, right? I'm separating myself from all of my competitors. I'm elevating my business above everybody else because nobody else can duplicate the fact that people want to work with me to get to hang out with me and get to network with me and get to like spend time with me after following me online for a long period of time. So if you aren't sharing images of yourself and pieces of your life, that doesn't have to mean you share everything, right? Share whatever you're comfortable with. But if you aren't integrating who you are into the way that you share, you're missing out on the potential for some amazing connection with your potential clients and some really incredible marketing opportunities. And in 2022, this would look a little bit different for me if I was just starting my business for the first time right now, because back when I started my business in 2013 or 2014, the way that I shared that content looked a little bit different. I was just posting pictures on my Instagram feed all the time. That was back when Instagram was not like it is now. There was no algorithm working against me. I posted sometimes five plus times a day on my feed because that was how I engaged with my audience and showed up to show them how in demand that I was. In 2022, that would look different. It would look like short form video. It would look like TikToks and reels and way more Instagram stories because posting on my feed is not what allows me to engage with my audience in a really personal and intentional way now. So 
In 2022, those efforts would shift to short form video, Instagram stories, TikTok, and those type of platforms. So that's how I would do that differently in 2022, but that underlying principle of connecting with my audience and showing the creation process is still the same. The fourth thing that I think is really important when it comes to starting a senior photography business is transparency with your pricing and your packages online. What I learned starting my business as a 17 or 18 year old high schooler was that if I allowed room for my pricing to come across as if it was negotiable, people would jump on the opportunity to negotiate pricing with me. And what I mean by that is if somebody shot me an email and asked me what I charged for senior portraits and the way that I presented my pricing was just by responding in that email and saying, yeah, I charge $100 for a session. For some reason, people perceive that as not being a solidified number. They're like, oh, well, that wasn't a very professional way to present pricing, so that must mean there's some wiggle room for negotiation here. And that's obviously not the case. Um, and so instead, I want you to have a professional and elevated way that you present your pricing so that when you send it to a potential client, the perception is that there's no room for negotiation and that number is set in stone. And so that can look different for everybody. That can mean you have a page on your website that you send them to with your pricing. That can mean you have a PDF guide that you send them with your pricing. I just want you to have a way to present your pricing that appears to be professional and doesn't leave room for negotiation. And in addition to that, I've also learned that in the senior photography world, there are a lot of discrepancies in the ways that people charge for their sessions and for their work. My puppy's playing in the background, if you can hear that. Um, but there's a lot of discrepancies, right? So some people do digital files and all of the digital images are included in the package. Some people do in-person sales um, that require a sales minimum in order to work with me. Some people do a sitting fee and a minimum for in-person sales. And if somebody is shopping for a senior photographer, they've likely seen a variety of pricing structures in their searches. So you want to be sure that you are incredibly transparent and straightforward with what your pricing includes because people don't like hidden fees. They don't like being surprised with the cost of prints and products after the fact. My encouragement to you would be that the more professional you can present your pricing and the more transparent you can be about what's included in those packages and in that pricing, the better off your business is going to be. And number five, the fifth thing that I have always done in my senior photography business and that I think is really strategic in 2022 is starting a spokesmodel team. And a spokesmodel team is, I have tons of videos about this on my channel too, it is essentially a group of local high school girls and boys or just girls, whatever you would prefer, that represent your business for the entirety of their senior year. So in my business, there's an application process. They apply to be a part of this ex super exclusive group. I photograph them at multiple group shoots and events and I do their senior portrait and it's a really fun experience for them. And my requirement for them is that they share about my business and refer their friends to me for their senior portraits. And this works really, really well because especially in the senior portrait market, you have to get integrated in those communities in order for seniors to be excited about working with you. Seniors love to do what's popular, what's in demand, and what their friends are doing. So if you can establish yourself as the go-to photographer in a group of friends or in a specific high school, then you are set, right? Because that word of mouth marketing is just going to keep going and keep going. And you're going to keep booking more clients in those small communities and in those friend groups. So spokesmodel teams are so strategic and so valuable to senior portrait businesses, especially senior portrait businesses that are newer and trying to make themselves known in either a new market if you've just moved or because you're a new business owner that's never done this before. So I highly recommend considering the concept of adding a spokesmodel team in your business this. Over the next few weeks on my YouTube channel, I'm going to be talking more and more about spokesmodel teams specifically. So I would love to have you subscribe so that you get notified when those new videos go live every single week, because we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into what a spokesmodel team is and how you can actually make that happen in your photography business. So I hope these five things were helpful to you. Just to recap really quickly, number one is to master your craft. Number two is to share your work and appear to be in demand. Number three is to make your followers and your communities a part 
of that creation process in the way that you share online. Number four is to have a professional way to present your pricing with transparency about what your packages include. And number five is to consider a spokes model team structure in your business to integrate yourself in those communities. So hope this was helpful. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a free gift for you in the description below if you would like to get my 12 page senior boy posing guide to walk you through my 10 favorite poses with tons of tips and tricks that you can literally apply and see changes at your next session. And again, would love to have you subscribe. I share new videos every single week. I'll be back next Monday with more content about spokes model teams. And I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.